one thing I would like to add is to say that I do not use PowerPoint. Oh, blessings on you. I get thank you notes from students because I don't use PowerPoint. But that's not why I do it. I do not use PowerPoint. I use a graphics camera and handwritten things I put up there. And I do that for several reasons. You know, first of all, um, it allows it to be more improvisational. You have to tell me what a graphics camera is. Is oh, that like it's like, a like an old overhead projector, overhead. except that except that instead of being films, it's a camera that, that looks like a paper mm -hmm. rather than than light that comes through. So mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, it's it's the old it's, uh, it's the new version of an overhead projector. Yeah. Okay? yeah. So um, I can write down students' words, mm -hmm. which is very powerful. Powerful. Mm -hmm. powerful. I can. If a student asks a question and I got two slates down, we're going to talk about that. I pull that out and do deal with it right then mm -hmm. because that's meeting them right where they are, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is so important. Um, it's not canned. It's you know it's fluid, mm -hmm. and it 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 enables them to bring their own ingredients for mm -hmm. this wonderful soup we're making together. Right. It's live and it's immediate. Yes. Yes. And I can draw. Mm -hmm. um, I, I draw very crude sketches, and, and my students always laugh because I always say this is not to scale, you know. Mm -hmm. And and because many people are visual, and you can see a process happening. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I don't put up nice graphic from a from a text mm -hmm. of a polished picture. I draw it myself, and we talk about it while it's happening, mm -hmm. which tells the students, okay, you can draw this while it's happening. You can. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be polished. Let's see it happen. Mm -hmm. So, and I put objects on the mm -hmm. on the graphics camera as 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 well. Now, give me an example of that. I brought some tubercle bacilli, uh, and uh, somebody who has active tuberculosis has <coughs> coughed or sneezed or sung, or whatever, and here they are, out in the air. What happens next? They're inhaled by someone in the vicinity. And where do they go? Uh, down, the lung, down the airways, down to the alveoli. This is an alveolus here. Okay. So here they are. Oops, pen cap. Here they are in the alveolus. What happens next? Do you know what happens next? Absolutely. We have alveolar macrophages patrolling our alveoli. <laughs> and they phagocytize the TB organism. Now, what happens next? Why can't they kill it? You know, when usually when a macrophage phagocytizes something, it, 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 it takes it in and it's in a little membrane-bound vesicle called a phagosome. And how does it get rid of it? It fuses it with the lysosome. You know what this TB organism can do? It can change the pH inside the phagosome, so it will not fuse with the lysosome. And it's going to live in there. Whoa, it's living in there, and not only that, it's going to multiply in there. And someone mentioned it takes it somewhere else. Okay, it can take it to another part of the lung, or even <laughs> stay in here, and it may kill the macrophage, and now we got, whoop, now we got them loose. And we're going to, have to bring in more and more white blood cells, and eventually, as you mentioned, it's going to wall it off. If we can't kill it, let's put it in prison. So we are, this is not to scale. You may have noticed my macrophage wasn't to scale either. Okay, so we're going to wall it off. We're going to put a whole bunch of immune cells, three-dimensionally, all over. It's like Edgar Allan Poe's uh, short story, The Cask of Amontillado, if anybody's familiar with that. Just wall it up, okay, brick it up, Covered around with immune cells, and what do we call that thing? Okay, we call it a tubercle or a gun tubercle. Okay, so at this point, what does the person have? Latent tuberculosis infection. Exactly, exactly. 
So after the requisite number of weeks, are we going to see a positive tuberculin test? Absolutely. I, I also have had some great role models that I have um, channeled at times in my mm -hmm. mind, right? And um, one of them is Linda Felber. Ooh. I had her in my graduate program, and I was very inspired by her teaching. What inspired you? She had the uncanny ability of taking something very complex and making it remem memorable and rememberable, uh -huh. if that makes sense. Um, and she took, um, she was so creative. I mean, you were always wondering what she was going to pull out of her metaphorical hat uh -huh. every day. And, um, and so she would take the essence of the pathophysiological process mm -hmm. and often put it in a story or a metaphor or a visual. Um, so for instance, I remember she always, you know, brought this crazy um, Godzilla mm. plastic animal whenever she talked about the fight or flight reflex, you know, she, you know, and, and, you know, you just get it, right? You're like, yeah. oh yeah, Godzilla's coming, right? Yeah. You know, oh, fight or flight. Um, so it was just, it's silly sort of ways, but it embeds it in your brain in a way that's easy to retrieve. Mm -hmm. um, I still use some of the analogies that I learned from her mm -hmm. when I'm thinking about physiology myself, when I'm talking to my students about it, when I'm connecting why hemoglobin might decrease oxygenation, mm -hmm. I use her story. Mm -hmm. um, so I think her ability to take um, and, and create um, connections mm -hmm. in, in a way either narrative or visual mm -hmm. um, that's easily retrievable and something we can relate to, I think is a, it's an enormous gift. Right. I think she does a, a really amazing job of situating science in uh, everyday understanding. And yes. Making, yeah, that's yes, great. I agree. It's, it's such a joy and a privilege uh, to engage in the teaching of pathophysiology. Isn't it fun? Uh, you've got all the hallmarks. These, these are the other hallmarks of a great teacher. Uh, enthusiasm, passion, curiosity, you've got all of those. So that's great. Thank you so much. Thank you.